Hello and welcome to industrial management. Today we shall look into the evolution of scientific management. Management has developed into a science only quite recently in speaking of history it is a quite recent development and as a matter of fact industrial revolution is the cause which converted industrial management into an exact science and industrial revolution in turn was seeded by what is called as renaissance and as you know renaissance was uh, a cultural awakening so also a scientific awakening which occurred in europe until then Europe, as you are all aware, was sunk deep in apathy in a period that we call the Dark Ages. During the Dark Ages, it was not permitted for the layman or for any man that whatsoever to speak out against the authorities. Or in other ways, it was not possible to question established norms. To question established norms meant a very painful demise. Because of this, the entire Europe and most of the other parts of the world too were sunk into an apathy and people were totally uh, blamed not blameless but rather you can say the people were afraid to question things they were afraid to question things now what happened was that when the Europe came into contact with the Eastern civilizations in the 11th century and the 12th century in a series of wars they came into contact with totally new ideas they came into contact with civilizations which were radically different from their own and this allowed them to think out of the box to think differently from what they were taught with the result that renaissance had its seeds in france also in europe also in uh, uh, england but initially it had its uh, roots in Italy and France. What happened was that people started to think that life was not what they were used to. There was more to life than what they had been taught. People who had not taken a bath in their entire life, would you believe me? Who had not taken a bath in their entire life, they came across new civilizations, unknown civilizations who took bath twice a day, a Turkish bath, a steam bath, a rock bath. People were surprised and people who were eating just boiled meat and boiled potatoes, when they came in touch with civilizations which made wonderfully spicy food, these were also a reason for the people to think out of their rut. As a matter of fact, it is the Crusades which caused the people of Europe to come into touch with the people of the Eastern civilizations. And as they had to pass from Europe towards Jerusalem, they had to pass through a number of civilizations which were radically different from their own. With the result that they woke up to the fact that the world was a much different place than what they had assumed. Now, as a result of this, main changes took place in culture, paintings, art. So also in science, people became aware that scientific techniques were being adapted everywhere. Whereas, in their country, they were forced not to ask questions because of hegemonic authority 
But here they found everything open. So they started wondering. Galileo, for instance, he decided that the Copernican theory was the right one, for which he was almost, almost crucified. People were killed. Uh, superstitions were rife in Europe just before the Renaissance. Superstitions were rife in the sense that people used to uh, put women to death simply on a suspicion of being witches. Their test was very funny. What they did was if the woman who was accused of being a witch was found she was put to a test. Do you know what the test? It's a very simple one, but a very hilarious one, if, if it were not so cruel. What they did was, they tied the lady hand and foot and threw her in the nearest pond, very deep pond. Now, if she drowned, then they will say, alas, this woman was not a witch. But unfortunately, if the, if the woman was, were young and she had lots of fat on her body and her specific uh, density was quite low, to be lower than that of water, then she would float. And if she floated, then they were sure that this woman was a witch. What they did was, they took her out. They took her out of the pond. And then, they proceeded to kill her in the kindest way without spilling a drop of, drop of blood. Do you know what that mother was? Without spilling a drop of blood? She was burned at stake. She was burned at stake. So this was the infamy, this was the darkness in which Europe was plunged before the Europeans came into contact with other civilizations and the seeds of renaissance was sown. Now this renaissance, it kept on increasing its in its scope and finally came to fruition as the industrial revolution of Europe which started by the way in England and would you believe it one of the crucial reasons for the industrial revolution to take place where and when it took place the spatio-temporal location of uh, industrial revolution in uh, England was significantly helped by us Indians at that time. See, England and most of Europe was on an empire building spree. They were on an empire building spree and as a result what happened was that Europe's empires were everywhere. Europe's empires were, were everywhere. Most of the the third world as it is called or rather Asia, most of Asia, most of Africa were under the yoke of empires built by the European powers. Now what the European powers did was they tried to exact the maximum amount of profit from the empires over which they had hold. One of which was India. And India was a source of coal. This coal and uh, later on perhaps the cotton which, also, which is also of Indian origin were one of the main reasons for the growth of industrial revolution in England. As to how that occurred is another story. So this is the end of part one. Part 2 of Industrial Revolution and Birth of Industrial Engineering as a Science will be next.